Hello. So today we'll be talking about interest rate swaps and how to do a simple calculation on it. Trust me, it's going to be very simple. No need for hard mathematics. Okay, so we need to set the background story right. So we need to assume that there are two companies. So let's say company A and company B. Okay, so the banks will offer them both the fixed rate and the floating rate for the loans. Okay, so left is fixed and right is floating. So for company A is a better company than B, it has lower risk. So for the fixed rate, the bank is going to offer it at 8%. And for B, it's going to offer it at 10%. Same for floating. Floating will have a, a rate that changes every day, which is the LIBOR or the cyber for Singapore and you add a let's say 1% okay as B is a riskier company so it has LIBOR at 2% okay so let's do some simple analysis on it so for company A is a much better company so for both fixed rate is lower and for floating is also lower interest rate Okay, but for interest rate swap, we need to take a look at this thing called a comparative advantage. So for A is better than B by 2% for fixed rate and A is better than B by 1% for floating rate. So in this sense, A actually has a greater advantage in fixed rate then it has an advantage in floating rate. So the competitive advantage lies for A to get a fixed rate and B to get a floating rate. Okay, so we need to set the stage, set the stage right. So currently A, since it's better off paying a fixed rate, it is going to pay it's going to pay a fixed rate now okay so interest rate of 8% every month will be given out and B since it has advantage in LIBOR cyber, uh, floating rate is going to be paying LIBOR plus 2% okay so if anytime you are unsure you you can always pause the video or go and rewind the video to take a look. Okay, so the important thing is they must be already serving a loan which they are having a competitive advantage in. Okay, so sometimes for let's say company B, it, uh, it wants, us to, wants to change its debt, debt structure. So it doesn't want to pay floating anymore. It wants to change to fixed rate and A wants to change to a floating rate. Okay, so if they were to simply go to the bank, so A, instead of paying 8% for fixed rate, right? instead of paying 8% for fixed rate, if it goes to a bank, it will now change and pay floating rate LIBOR plus 1%. Alright, and if B is initially paying a floating rate of LIBOR plus 2%, it will now pay a fixed rate of 8% if it goes to a bank directly. Okay, but we shall see in the interest rate swap by merely just so shipping or swapping among themselves, they are able to get a better rate. Alright, so first thing, how we calculate it is we must see that the difference here is 2% and the difference here is 1%. Okay, this part is going to get a bit technical, so you need to bear with me. Okay, uh, always you can slow down the video or pause at any time. So the difference between these two is 2% and 1%. Right, you got to take the difference between the differences. So the difference is 2 minus 1, so it's 1%. So this is a gain if they manage to sort among themselves of 1% instead of going to the bank directly. Okay, assuming that they split it 50-50, in other words, their 1% will be split between A and B equally. A is going to get a savings of 0.5% and B is going to get a savings of 0.5% because it's 1% divided by 2. Alright, so now we have in essence the equation for the credit rate swap, interest rate swap, I'm sorry. Okay. 
So initially A is paying a percent. This is company A. Okay, so it now is going to pay a floating rate. So it will pay LIBOR plus one percent. Correct? But take note it has is going to swap among themselves. So it's gonna share the gain of 0.5%. So 1% minus 0.5% will give you 0.5%. Alright, so there must be a change going on here. Okay, so how do we get from here to here is we need to add LIBOR. And how do we get from here to here? Is to minus 7.5%. Okay, so far, shh, okay. Now, next you can also do this from the power of company B. Alright, so B was initially paying LIBOR plus 2%. Okay, if it goes to the bank directly, it will pay a fixed rate of 10%. So this is B. But because it is going to share the gains by swapping among themselves, it's now going to pay 9.5%, which is 10% minus 0.5%. Alright, so how do we get from here to here is we need to have a change of minus LIBOR plus 7.5%. Okay, so now we can take a look at actually this and this are exactly the opposite of each other. Okay, so now let's take a look at company A. When it adds LIBOR minus 0.5%, whenever time you see an add, because this add here, it is paying money. So A needs to pay B a LIBOR rate. And when you see a minus, it means receive. So A receives from B 7.5%. Okay. And you take a look at from the perspective of B, it is minus LIBOR, so it needs to receive LIBOR. And it needs to add 0.75%, which is paying 0.5%. So, you, if you manage to see, this is the simple calculation of what is the rate that they need to sort amongst themselves. Alright. So, if let's say, this is adding on, this LIBOR, we can add a 1% here. And here we need to add a 1%. Okay. And the net effect will still be the same. If you're not sure of this, you, just, you can just simply skip the 1% and this will be the rate at which they will swap. Okay, so we have come to the end of the video. Um, I will be doing a next video on when you have a bank which is in the middle of the credit swap agreement and how is the bank going to make money simply by finding company A and company B. Okay, and thank you so much. For more videos, you can subscribe or you can visit my blog where I give accounting tuition and finance tuition. Thank you.